So, how on earth is an award-winning tequila made? I'm guessing that is why you clicked on this video. So today we're gonna study a brand called Cierto, who has won a ton of them, so that we can learn from them how to do it. If we are meeting for the first time, my name is Livio and this is Master Your Glass. On this show, we talk about spirits, cocktails, and always about the traditions that are tied to these types of beverages. And today, this video is sponsored by Cierto, but that is not the reason why I'm gonna tell you exactly what I'm about to tell you. This brand here has won over 870 awards and still counting. So by learning what they do, perhaps we can learn how an award-winning tequila is made. Before we get too far, let's talk about what Cierto Tequila is. Cierto Tequila is obviously an award-winning product. It is obviously made in Mexico, and it is made with agaves that are grown in the Atotonico, Jalisco area. The people behind it are fourth and fifth generation uh, master tequileros or master distillers, which means they've been making this product or their heritage goes back way to the 1800s. Now let's start with the actual agave. They have their own estate-grown agaves. Estate-grown means they have control, they grow their own agaves. Within these plants, the two master tequileros will basically walk daily, weekly, whatever the period is, to find the agaves at the right point. Now, this isn't a time watch. This isn't a, we pick a row whenever that we feel it's time to pick that row. This is a skip an agave. Skip an agave, ooh, that one is ready. Skip an agave. There are multiple phases of how agaves will mature. They pick theirs at the fourth and the fifth phase, which is called Maduro and Pinto. In the Maduro and Pinto phases, the agave has enough carbohydrates to give you the right amount of sugar to give you a delicious flavor. Now, in a Totonico, we have this really red clay, tough soil. This forces the agave plant's roots to go deep down more into the soil. And by going deeper down into the soil, it's basically attracting and absorbing a lot more nutrients and vegetal flavors that will come into this agave. It's amazing. Now, by the way, I don't wanna to get too far in, but I'm gonna sidebar for just a second. At the end of this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about quick, important, cool facts that you'll wanna know, whether you're presenting this product to people at your bar or people at home, if you're entertaining, but so if you are into that, you can skip and you can go directly to the end and get the quick facts. But let me tell you more about this cool product uh, uh, before I jump into that portion of it. Now, the, uh, the agaves are matured, they are hand crushed, right? And then they are basically uh, cooked in a slow cooking oven in a low pressure oven that will ex help extract the sugars, will help cook it so that the sugars can be extracted. This product then is really cool. By the way, only three ingredients, no additives, nothing else. And those ingredients are agave, yeast, and water. All three of those are super special the way they make it. Um, when it's time to distill this product, they follow the traditions of Scotland. And in Scotland, usually Scotch whiskeys are double distilled in a pot still. This product here is double distilled in a pot still. Obviously, they use their highly uh, ingrained Mexican traditions in making natural, additive-free, tasty tequila. But then they use another cool trick, which is they are inspired by the French by actually aging their three-aged expressions into barrels that are French oak, which have previously aged Armagnac or Cognac or maybe even a wine. Now, French oak gives a little different flavor than American oak. American oak is usually a little bit more sweet. French oak usually gives a flavor that is a little more uh, like, a, like a, a leather polish that you would find, right? A little bit more cedary as well. And so all of those uh, really cool steps that they take make their way into this product. 
There's a lot more I can tell you, but as you can see, what it takes so far to make an award-winning tequila is to take every step meticulous into making your product. There's really no other way to do it. If your tequila doesn't have step by step, step by step, everything done meticulously and with passion and with love, you just can't become an ultra award-winning tequila. You might win one, you might win two, you can't win 876. So, what am I gonna do today? As I mentioned, at the end of this video, there's gonna be these brief, what I call 15 second so what pitches. But in the meantime, I am gonna taste these as I would as a spirits judge. You may or may not know, I judge a few spirits competitions, so I have experience on what judges are looking for. Now that's really, really in-depth, nerdy uh, things that have really a lot to do with what's in the glass, but not a lot to do with how to serve it at the table. So the end of this video will be dedicated to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my, what I think would be my little spirit tasting. I'm gonna analyze them that way, and then we'll dive right into the rest. Typically my tasting mat or the tasting mat would be something like this, where you would have all your tequilas lined up. Now I don't believe as a spirit judge I ever tasted Cierto before. I might have, right? We taste hundreds and hundreds. So after the competition is over and the judging is done and it, we're blind, so we're not supposed to know what we're looking at in the testing of this scenario, we walk into this room and picture it has about a dozen tables and on these tables, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bottles. As you can imagine, we probably miss seeing a couple of hundred when we're snooping around, but I doubt I would have missed this really tall bottle, which is why I don't think I've ever tried Cierto before. So now, before I get into the judging, let me just get into a little bit the aging of these four fine products, so then I can just put my judge hat on and we can move on. Uh, Cierto Tequila Blanco is only aged for eight months in a stainless steel vessel. Now stainless steel is cool in this case because it doesn't impart any flavors. It's just really letting the flavors of the, the existing flavors in the tequila mingle together. Over here, the Reposado is aged for 11 months inside of a French oak barrel, which we talked about that earlier. This one over here, the Añejo, is aged for 18 months in the French oak barrel. And over here, we have the Extra Añejo, which goes for 48 months in the French oak barrel. Now that we got that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a look at the product here. Now, the first thing we do as judges is we just take a look. We're not writing tasting notes, so we're not like, oh my God, this is straw or copper. We are not writing the notes. We're looking for anything that, are, that is faulty. What could be faulty? A product that's not crystal clear doesn't always mean it's not good, but it's a watch out, right? If it's a little opaque, uh, opalescent, or cloudy, maybe there's something wrong with it. This is water white and clear as it can be. So now that I've done, I'm done observing it, right? I'm gonna go ahead and put my nose in it. Just again, I'm an investigator here in this case as a judge. I'm looking for something off. I'm not looking for something on. I'm not ready to give this brand an award or a medal uh, yet. I'm not looking for how to award it. I'm looking for, is it a good product right, right now? We haven't met, we're just meeting. I'm analyzing that. So I'll put my nose in, different people do it different ways. Usually one nostril is more open than the other. So some people will just go to the side. Some people will do the whole experience. Some people will make it further away. See what you smell from down here, maybe at your chin. If it were a super aged product, you would even start even lower, but right here at the chin, I'm getting some tropical fruits as I bring it up here. I know it's a tequila, but I would have said sourdough. Citrus, obviously. 
and a little bit of floral, just a little bit of flower. Now, I don't know what flower it is yet. I can't get too deep into that, but that's what I'm getting. So floral, sourdough, um, that's it. Yeah, little citrus. Taste number one for me is cleanse the palate. Let it know what's coming. But this is such an expressive tequila that even though I just put a couple of drops, I'm already getting a lot of flavors. It pops with flavor. Let me get texture out of the way. I don't wanna worry about it anymore. Texture, which is something we're looking for, is great. It's got nice weight on the palate, beautiful little oiliness, not thin. The flavor still has that really highly floral note. Almost a little bit of chocolate vanilla-ish to it, which is really super interesting. And I'm still getting that really nice uh, floral notes to it, like a sweet daisy floral flavor to it. Last thing I'm looking for is finish, right? How long is this finish going to be? Now I swallowed it over 45 seconds ago. It's still here. It's got a really long finish. And now I'm gonna ask myself, would I have another sip? And the answer is yes, right? If I were at a bar or at somebody's house and they offered me, would I have another sip? The answer is yes, check. Am I getting anything faulty? Is there a bad distillate in this distillate? No, I don't get any off flavors. Clearly there's no cotton candy additive coming out of it. So I can tell it's additive free but it's magical because it's additive free with some cool fruity flavors to it that were incorporated likely, right? Very likely from how they picked the agave, the barrels that they picked that previously had uh, cognac and other ingredients potentially in it, uh, even though the Blanco in this case doesn't have that. But the techniques that they're using are not giving me any additive uh, flavor to it at all. So really nice. So I'm checking, as I'm checking down the boxes, it's still long in flavor. My mouth is starting to water. Very long finish. For me, an exceptional product uh, is a very close to a very good product, which is very close to a great product. Exceptional means it took me for the long haul. Right? And so the reason why this for me is really good is I am still tasting it. I'm actually liking it, liking my flavor so much or liking the flavor that's going on in my mouth so much that I don't need another sip right now. This is still very enjoying, right? If it would have been short, I would have been ready for more. If it would have been delicious but short, it would have been maybe still an award-winning tequila, but just not to the next level, right? I believe this one here, don't quote me, but this one alone has won over 90 awards alone. How did it do that? Because no matter where they're entering it, these criteria are popping through. Uh, I'm gonna be a little bit less descriptive on the third, on the next three, because I wanted to walk you through the system. Uh, so I'm gonna move on to the uh, Reposado here. As we mentioned, aged uh, 11 months inside a French oak barrel. I see no faults, nothing. I see a nice little bright clarity to the product here. No floaties, nothing like that. Um, so some people look for what are called the legs or the tiers. Usually the wider tiers mean higher in alcohol or they mean more sugar. I find that to not be consistent from one glass to another. So I personally don't look at that. Uh, but one thing that I should add is I sit at the table with five other judges. Most of the time it's tables of six or tables of four. And all of those people are experts in what they do. And very often we don't agree on what's in the glass. So this is my perspective. I'm sure other people would have 
uh, very different wines. Oh, this is, I'm getting like a dark sour cherry from a distance. Dark sour cherry becoming a little more citrusy and, and lemony, I should say, on the nose here. Becomes a little bit more different here. I want to say sarsaparilla. What's the flavor in Coca-Cola? I'm getting a little sarsaparilla, if that's the flavor, in Coca-Cola here in addition to that nice little citrusy, almost like pineapple-y flavor as well. A whisper of white pepper, a little white pepper going on on the aroma. So I'm satisfied with the aroma because I don't see any faults and I'm satisfied with the aroma because what I'm smelling are all key indicators of what I know to be uh, good things to look for in tequila. Small sip. Okay, first sip was incredible, by the way. Toffee, big time toffee uh, flavor to it. Now I'm gonna take a bigger sip, swish it around, get the texture, get the flavor. What I have a tendency of doing when I take the second sip is to swirl it around, get all the receptors to do it, I almost poke the liquid with the tip of my tongue because the tip of my tongue is the most delicate and it captures a lot of flavors. And I want the liquid to hit my gums because a bad distillate will chew your gums. You'll get needles right here. You'll get a bunch of needles just poking at you. When you do that with a good distillate, that doesn't happen. Not happening here. Toffee, white pepper, um, a little bit of eucalyptic eucalyptus, minty on the flavor. Nice and refreshing. Longevity is there, right? I can still taste it. Yeah, and it ends with a mild little coffee note, but I'm saying ends because it's been going on this way for a few seconds now, but it hasn't ended yet. So once again, an award-winning tequila has, it hits all the marks in a beautiful, clean way, but it gives you longevity. And the two things that I find are most difficult to do without additives in a good tequila is flavor, okay, great. Texture, good texture without additives, and longevity. Having this thing taste good in your mouth for a long time that takes you to the next level, if you ask me. Let's move on over here to Añejo, aged 18 months in a uh, French oak barrel. Again, no flaws, no faults, kind of light in color. French oak, of course, gives less big colors than American oak usually does. And um, what else is there to say that I haven't mentioned yet? Again. A little agitation works. It's not like a wine. We don't do these big swirls, but a little agitation does help bring up some of those aromas, increase the surface of oxygen to liquid. Clearly this is more oaky. The oak component into this is playing more into the flavor of the tequila. Lots of minerality now. Oak and minerals, okay? Less fruity, less playful, right, than what we had over here. We're getting a little bit more serious, or I shouldn't say serious, because obviously they're all serious, a little less playful, a little more big, bolder flavors. And that's about all I catch here. Let's take a taste. OK, 
Okay. Toffee and toffee and caramel. Okay. Big toffee and big caramel. Um, getting a little more coffee-ish on the end. Nice little alcohol. I'm wondering if this, and I can't see it as a judge, but I can't see it here because I have it. I was wondering if it had a little bit more alcohol, but volume, no, 40%. The alcohol here is playing a bigger role. Again, for aged spirits, that, that plays really well, right? Obviously, these aren't mix your margarita uh, type of tequilas. These are all more about the tasting experience. And in this one here, the wood and the alcohol base get to play a bigger role into it. Really, really cool. What is my flavor right now? Big toffee, black pepper, um, leaning on the caramel, some whispers of chocolate, but clean clean, no needles, fresh. It's funny how award-winning doesn't mean it delivers some big who-know-what to the table. Award-winning winning to us means well-made, clean, no faults, brings to the table what it should bring to the table, delivers it very, very well, and that one does. Let's move on to the Mac Daddy in the house here, which is their 48 month old extra Añejo tequila here. Um, as you can see, obviously the barrel has given a little bit more color, right? In comparison to the Repo, not that much, but as you know, um, tequilas don't need to be super aged, right? It already takes a long time to get the agave to give us the amount, the right amount of sugars for alcohol. We don't need to throw it in a barrel for 20 years. Okay, color here, no falls, no faultiness, nothing that I can imagine. Let's go ahead and give it a small swirl. I know this is something serious and nothing is popping, it's more rounded. There's one big bold yet to be identified aroma. But if I were to pick one, white pepper, 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 pepper. Let's bring it over here. Pepper has increased. Caramel has increased. Wine. I have no idea if this is the case, but the barrel that aged this product could have had a wine in it. There's almost like this little red wine element to it. Very interesting. Okay. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. I think the choice of French oak was a wise one because it really works well with not making this product overly big and bold. It's super drinkable for an extra Añejo. Super, super drinkable. Um, makes you want to come back for more, which in my opinion is a, an awesome thing when you're talking about, um, you know, the, the Mac Daddy, the, the, the superlative, the most aged product in the house. Uh, I don't want to take one sip. I want to enjoy a few more sips, which is what it's doing. Very nice, very nice. And now I'm getting some cognac -y notes. What are some cognac notes? A lot of cognacs will showcase whispers of uh, stone fruits, peaches, apricots, maybe prunes. Um, and I'm getting that. I'm not getting prunes in here, right? I'm not getting peaches or apricots, but I'm getting the flavor of cognac in here. And usually the flavor of cognac has those aromas to it. This finish is a lot more coffee-ish and a lot more chocolatey, dark chocolate, for what is a super long finish. But somewhere in here, in my mouth, there's some eucalyptus going on. There's a little mintiness to it. It's refreshing, 
which is interesting again for a really aged product. Finish is long and cool because, well, it's still here. No faults. So an award-winning tequila, if you ask me, showcases all the right step. It comes from the heart. The award isn't in the strategy. The award is in the culture. The award is in the story that they told themselves when they wanted to make the brand so that they followed it into what perfect practices. Culture uh, eats strategy for breakfast. So what was the strategy part? The strategy part is definitely that this tequila has been entered into a ton of competitions in order to win these awards, right? But on the flip side of that, the culture was that every step they were to take was to be the best. So. Bottom line is, and I know this sounds like marketing speak, and every brand tells you that they do everything meticulously, but let's remove that for a second. And if uh, my interpretation of analyzing this is, take every step from your heart, right? Do it the right way, do it the cleanest way, do it the best way you possibly can, make sure the liquid is delicious, enter it in competitions, and then just the magic happens. That's how you make an award-winning tequila. Now, we're gonna step into the very last part. If you skipped everything before that, that's fine. We're gonna get to what is, what I believe, my favorite part of spirits in general. It's the hospitality part. It's the telling the story. And the telling of the story is usually something what uh, marketers will call the elevator pitch. The elevator pitch means you push the button on the elevator and by the time you get to the 13th, the third floor, the fourth floor, within 15 seconds, you have to tell people what the product is. The problem with that is that it doesn't tell them what's in it for them. And so the so what, which is what I like to talk about, is what's the product and so what? What is in it for them? So if I were to give you the 15 second so what pitch or presentation on Cierto Blanco, I would basically say this. Cierto is an award-winning Blanco tequila. Every single step and every single ingredient that they put into this product is 100% top notch. It is aged for eight months in a stainless steel uh, vessel and what that whole process brings to you, my friend, my consumer, my dear uh, viewer, is wonderful flavors that are more fruity and they're gonna be a little bit more floral with hints of sourdough. It's the type of tequila that isn't gonna give you that big aftermath of sweetness in your mouth so that it will welcome your food that you're going to eat or it is gonna be a great compliment after you uh, finish eating. There you go. The second one is, here's my so what 50 second, 15 second uh, pitch on the Reposado. This is Cierto Reposado. Now Cierto is an award-winning tequila. They have won over 800 awards. And this here is their version, which is aged for 11 months in French oak. Everything they put in this product is 100% natural. There's only three ingredients, agave, water, and yeast. The aging in French oak brings out some flavors here that are very, very interesting. You're gonna get a little bit more toffee flavors, you're gonna get a little bit of caramel flavors, and it's gonna maybe just slightly lead into some a whisper of some coffee notes. And so if those flavors are for you, you're gonna really dig this. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the Añejo. And here is my presentation, right? This here is Cierto Añejo. Uh, Cierto Añejo is aged for 18 months in a French oak barrel, which is very unique in the production of tequila. Cierto is an all natural tequila. There's only three ingredients inside, agave, water, and yeast. By putting it 18 months in a French oak barrel, you're gonna get flavors here that are gonna be a little bit more toffee 
and leaning more into a little bit of coffee and maybe a whisper, whisper, whisper of caramel. And those flavors are really good after a meal. They're delightful with a cigar or just a sip on with uh, some friends or some good company. You see how the 15 second presentation dodges all of the features or most of the features and picks up the benefits. So you're gonna like it if. Right? We can't tell everybody that they like, that they have to like it. We can say, if you like these flavors, it's for you. With a wide variety of flavors here, chances are we would get what we want. Last but not least, this here is Cierto Extra Añejo. Extra Añejos are very special tequilas because they're aged more than three years. This one here is aged for 48 months in a uh, French barrel. Cierto is an all natural tequila, only three ingredients, agave, by the way, the best agaves, water and yeast, and out comes the magic. So what can you expect in this tequila? Well, if you like the flavors of toffee and dark chocolate and coffee in a rich flavor um, with a little whisper maybe of eucalyptus and mintiness to keep your mouth almost fresh, so that you can sip a few more, you're really gonna like this. Who would I drink this? Or what would I drink this with? A very more robust type of a cigar or a nice rich dessert style drink. And there you have it. Just remember that when you're presenting in the 15 second, uh, so what presentation? One, it doesn't have to be 15 seconds. It can be a little bit more, a little bit longer, so long as it doesn't get into this big, thing that I was doing when I was tasting uh, as a judge. And number two, obviously you're not tasting, so you're bringing the bottle there to them. Um, that brings the end of this video. If you find value in it, I really appreciate it if you'd give us a like, and if you haven't done so, subscribe to Master Glass, because on this channel, we talk about drinks and all the traditions that are tied to them. And thanks for watching.